The first reaction was, what the heck is Roller Derby? <laughs> um, followed by, oh my god, that looks really um, aggressive and dangerous, and why the heck would you want to do that? So it's a team sport, that's what I like about it. It's the one sport where having a big bum is a benefit. It's just so much cooler than any other sport, because it's on roller skates and you get to pick each other. I can't have a conversation without putting roller derby in it. The dress up factor, the hard hits, the skating, I thought it was just fun. And now it's become a little bit more to me. It's more like the girls are all my family. It's like being part of the biggest girl gang ever. I've got friends in every country in the world now. They really like strong women and they train really hard and they're all there for each other. It's a really like team orientated thing. Fantastic group of girls, great sport, gets a lot of aggression out. And once you're in it, there's no getting out of it. It becomes a part of your life. You wonder, what was I doing before? Like, what was I wasting my time doing? This is Ken Nidell, ready to bring you another thrilling roller derby. The origins of roller derby lie in 1930s America, when a young entrepreneur from Chicago, Leo Seltzer, organized a transcontinental endurance race of 27,000 laps around a banked track the distance between Los Angeles and New York City. The sport quickly grew in popularity but did not gain widespread recognition until 1958, when a rapidly growing television audience began to tune in. The 9th Regiment Armory on 14th Street in New York City, the Metropolitan Broadcasting Corporation presents Roller Derby. Hello there, fans. This is Eric Page, along with Ken Lydell, welcoming you to another action-packed hour of roller derby. By this time, roller derby had evolved to become a team sport. Points were scored by a single offensive player or jammer passing the opposition's defensive pack. The early 1970s saw roller derby peak in popularity when travelling teams could sell out arenas to more than 80,000 fans. The largest single crowd in the game's history. A history stretching back to the Depression. It was a nightly skating marathon. But no more just going around in circles anymore. Roller derby is big league. However, within five years, roller derby had all but collapsed. A fall in television revenue, along with increasing public apathy, had forced the league to become a pantomime version of itself, with choreographed races and over-the-top falls. But Roller Derby exploded back into life in 2004 when the newly established Women's Flat Track Derby Association helped spark new interest in the fading sport. We're governed by a WFTA, which is Women's Flat Track Associate, their Derby Association, whereby we have a day governance with a set amount of set size and track we use. We use tape to measure out the inside lines first and the outside lines. Um, and once done that, we then we rope over the top of those lines. Basically, if they hit that rope, they will feel a dump through their skates sure. and they'll know they've hit out, um, out of bounds. And if they then get called on out of bounds, they know they've done it. Blockers, like I say, you want to be sturdy, controlled. It used to be about big hits and making big show, but you still want for crowd entertainment and because it's effective. But you want to be more tactical. You want to be thinking about flowing, trapping, a more tactical game, basically. I picked up some of my German skills from Red because uh, when I first started watching her, she used to disappear in the middle of the pack and go, where is she? And then she'd come out of the pack, you know, really low. So I was like, oh, so that's how you do it. There's a lot of mindset in there as well for jammers. If you're jamming and you know you're going up against someone tough, you really have to get into the mindset of trying to focus on getting through and not letting the fact that you've got four massive girls in front of you put you off. Because if you know you've got a fast jammer, you're going to want to do your pack accordingly. You know, if you know they've got the stronger jammer, you're going to just want to play defense. Whatever size you are, you can make it work for you. So if you're quite small like myself, you can use that to your advantage by just a little gap at all. Skating down low, but 
then if you're um, one of the bigger built girls, you can use your weight to your advantage by smacking into the girls. To be honest, brilliant because she's got this. Uh, she's really quite sexy because of the big busty bum. And she's like, she's deep end. So when you try to get her, she's just busty bum. And you can't get around her. There is a role even for me. I'm small, I'm nimble, and I make the most of that. So if you're a hard to spot as a jammer, then it's your best bet. We've got um, two jammers that you need to watch, an entire pack that needs to be watched. All the interactions between the jammers and the pack, and the interactions between the pack and the rest of the pack. The penalties are broken down into two kind of uh, forms. You have your minor penalties and your major penalties. Backlocking, which is where a skater comes around and will hit uh, an opposing player in the back. Basically, um, if you imagine uh, a skater's back between the bar straps all the way down and into their bum, if they are hit there, yeah. and again it causes a stagger, they will get a backlock minor. Um, yeah, another on, one, yeah. yeah. And if they actually do it and they go down, they'll be given a backlock major. You get the odd um, elbow every now and again, so if I turn around him and do that and he wobbles, that's not really minor, but if I do that and I hit him with my elbow, and he skates and he's, he's got to be a significant a skate stagger, movement, stagger exactly, skate yeah. movement, then that would be classed as a minor penalty. Of course, if, I, the if, I then, if I did that hey. and he falls over, then that becomes a major penalty and the girl will go to the box. The sin bin. Oh. Well, it's embarrassing more than anything else to me, getting caught and having to do that whole lonely little skate to the chair where everybody can see you going around and they're like what's happened there where's she going <laughs> I'm like, oh god i'm in trouble i don't like this in bed because you gotta sit there and just watch and you gotta wait for somebody behind you to tell you you can stand up and then you can go the first time i came to watch a practice um i went out the next weekend and i got all my kit so the next session afterwards i was ready to go most of the girls that come into it aren't from sport backgrounds and they're not from roller skating backgrounds. My first session was literally hanging on to the walls. I got on the website and I went for trial um, and I made it through so I got involved in the Fresh Meat program and now I'm doing that until March or April and then hopefully I'll make it through and get onto a team. But we'll run probably a six to eight week program where they learn the basics, they learn how to fall, they learn how to stop which is very very important, um, they learn how to skate in a in the right posture because one thing we learned was over the years people I used to skate really upright and that's not correct and so it's re but it's really hard to retrain yourself to skate low so it'll be very basic things like that and they're actually much harder to pick up later down the line if you can get them in early. Basic skills tests in intermediate and advanced. When you're advanced you can bout public bouts against other advanced teams. And what the first new program actually does it just makes sure that you can skate safely so you can fall safely and um, yeah, you can just sort of make sure you stay on your feet. If you learn how to do these knee drops and um, baseball slides and everything like that, then you're less likely to panic when you are going to fall and injure somebody else as well as yourself. Because you're in a pack, you know. If you're and if you do fall the way you're supposed to, people can the girls in the pack can see that you're going to fall and they'll they can adjust themselves to either what kind of fall you're going to do jump over you, go around you, you know? Learning to, to just get your balance, to be manoeuvrable on skates, to get your derby position, um, teach you how to do the hits safely, so you hit with the right part of your body and you can take hits as well. Some girls just pick up skating really quickly, but then struggle to get the tactics, so although they can bow, they might not get the tactics as well as a girl who's taken longer to skate, but has a really good understanding of the game. But some girls have done it in six months, some girls maybe a bit less, some girls probably a bit more.
And all of a sudden, once you've passed your minimum skills, you're expected to go three days a week. But it suddenly becomes an, an awful lot more of a commitment. Sunday, roasts are out completely. Tuesday is drills, Thursday is scrimmaging, Sunday is endurance. If you're going to do it, you're definitely going to have to be really good at managing your time. As it grows and more girls come and you start playing regular games for teams, you have to decide then, are you going to commit? Make attendance and actually get to play, or are you just going to, because otherwise you just have to drop it. I can't watch my TV programmes anymore, or my films. Like it used to be, you know, if you'd been off from an injury, you'd come back and skate, and now we say, you know, if you've been off three months, you have to come back and do your skills again. And then you have to come back into the, not beginners, but like the, the you can't scrimmage for a certain amount of time, because you haven't been doing it for three months, and so you need to get your body back into it. Things like that, we're much more strict on now. I would never have committed to going to training for a sport and travelling like up to an hour and a half each way three times a week and now that's what I do and I don't even question it. When you start the first thing they teach you is how to fall, it's like literally before they teach you how to go forward and how to stop they teach you how to fall over. Fall forwards, you've got your knee pads, elbow pads, wrist guards, gum shield, helmet. If you fall back you're on your bum so you fall forward, fall forward, it's the first thing that they teach you and you're, you're protected. Typical injuries are collarbones, uh, fractured collarbones, fractured ribs, fractured elbows, broken ankles, and um, a couple of the girls have suffered from hematomas where you just keep whacking the same spot again and again and again, and the blood clots and you end up with a, a third boob in certain places. <laughs> it's, it's pretty nasty. You take a lot of body hits down the side, and if you, know, if you get a bad hit, the ribs are quite, rear actually quite delicate, so bumps and bruises and sprains. Huge black eye at one point. One girl literally snapped her leg. Ten seconds into my first jam, I fell and I broke my coccyx. I am basically a walking um, bruise. We practice in this sports hall on Sundays, like a, in a school, and you know the, the wooden benches, and she went flying across the floor and just hit it full on and was just like out cold for about a minute. But she was fine. She's a Survivor. There's like pages on Facebook like, where you post your boulder derby injuries. Yeah, it's kind of like a competition. Like you look at, I've got a really nice picture of Cindy. Cindy. Bruce. She had a bum drain. It was so bad. Broken elbows, broken ankles. Quite early on, I took a bad fall and tore a lot of the muscles and ligaments up in my leg. So I was off for a couple of months for that. We're all here for a good beating and to punish ourselves on a regular basis just for the sake of feeling good at the end of it. Knee injuries are quite common because you, you're landing a lot on your knees and it takes some girls take a while to find the right pads that work for them. These here are designed for ramp skaters um, so they do take a much higher impact. Um, most of our girls were these or something similar to these. Um, and they are really good and they help you bend your knees to get a nice derby position. <laughs> well, I have started wearing more and more protection. I've got shin pads now and special knee guards. I think you're buying like a big battle bra. <laughs> yeah. It's very responsive, which you need in derby, you know, um, for quick getaways or quick take outs and things like that. You want to move and your skate is a part of you.
we lay down the track, you'll have the refs and NSO meetings, so all the non-skating officials have their meetings, and the captains go aside and talk for any concerns they might have with refing or any new rules that have come in. We print up flyers that we hand out and place in bars and cafes around this area and, and other areas around London that attract the kind of people that we think would like to come along. Joe's skate shop, um, Jack's tattoo parlour. Lots of the girls have got like kids or little brothers and sisters and they like to get involved. I think Cindy Doll's little sister comes to all of our bouts and she's like their team mascot now. She runs out with the flag like before the game. I have like a sort of a ritual as well in choosing my belt fit and making sure I have a particular pair of pants on because they're lucky and silly stuff like that. But probably don't mean anything, but they mean a lot to me at the time. It's a psychological sort of build up. People probably look at me and think, I don't want to talk to her, but then once we're on the track, we're all equal. We just kind of mould together and then it's like a animalistic kind of, we are all one part of the machine. You have a set of tactics that you're going to use that each girl's work around and know and understand why they would be used in certain situations. And then therefore when they get on the track and they know who they're going against, they can switch. They know, right, okay, that jammer's on, she's really tough, we're going to have to do this. And then you have hand signals to communicate. Most of the time, it's not effective to just go out there and hit, hit, hit all the time. You have to be tactical. It's fun to see people in your in your league grow and all of a sudden you you know six months ago or a year ago they couldn't skate at all and you try to help them and show them how to stop and do a knee drop and now you're on the same track skating against each other all with each other. We normally have like a, like a sort of a pasta meal before we go and sort of um, get changed and so on and I remember eating about half of it because my stomach was going bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> Very grassroots, lots of music that's associated with grassroots, is, you know, a bit rebels and punks and rock, you know, rockers. <laughs> We're rock and roll after all. We like the live bands and yeah, we like to make an event for our audience. It's all very involved with the music that the girls that found it were, were quite into and we wanted to keep that throughout. There's no such thing as a typical world girl. I don't know if you know what, what, what people um, tend to do. I mean, I'm a scientist. It's not like you all work in the same office, so you all go skating together, and you all know what everyone's having for dinner. It's not like that. It's just like people are, as Jack says, are banks, policemen, policewomen. I work with um, website marketing. There was a girl who used to be a fishmonger. A lot of them work either in alternative styles, and like fashion, and and uh, tattoos. As soon as you get them in their roller derby outfit and on the track, they become their skate name. I knew when I first watched roller derby, I, I was going, oh, I'm going to call myself Zed Zed Sputnik, before I even considered putting skates on and doing it. You have a while to think up your name and people think pick something that is important to them or maybe they'll have their dad's birthday as their skate number and then maybe a band, they like, they'll try and find a way around having the name. So then others have like cute, funny names or just things that rhyme with their real name. It's your superhero name, isn't it? It's like your stage name. With some girls, I don't know their real names. In the street, if somebody says perfect, they kind of sort of look round and expecting it to be me when actually there's the same word perfect, so I can be a bit annoying. I'm Lola Costa, Kid Black, Boba Fetish, Judge Red, Billy Pistol, Hello Rishi, 
someone's going to look like a dog chasing rabbits around a track and so whip it. Going round and round like a satellite, it's like Sputnik, isn't it? It's fine. Falling down and crashing to earth. I kind of mentioned to people, you know, I have a cat. I basically looked at the pictures of her cat's over. So that is basically a replica of her cat. Other sports, you got like Henry Jones up front or Derek Chambers. Here, you've got Slash Face. Fond of chaos. I, I, I totally am, and uh, <laughs> what else can you say? On set there, no one else can, can have your name and number. So if someone, my name is Kit Kat Power, if someone came along and said I want to be um, Cat to Kit Power, they wouldn't be able to have that name. I really wanted um, a, a name called Puss, which is like from a Blade Runner um, film, but somebody already had that. So you have to register it, you have to send in an email to um, a team in America, um, they're super busy, and especially now when everything's been going, growing and growing, they've been receiving emails from the, all over the world. Lots of girls have names or skate names that are like sound very strong and powerful, like Genghis Khan. She wants to put forward the, the real Genghis Khan death and blood, so of course you can see that's very, very bloody. Whereas um, Femme Fatality, obviously, is more, it's kind of your female spy that she's going for, so she's got more subtle. Most of the girls on the team that have been tattooed here at least is usually something skate related. It's either their team logo, their skate name or maybe a pin-up girl of a roller girl. Each skater, although you all have to skate in red, can do their outfit how they want to do it. You know? So you're still part of a team but you have everyone's individuality can still come through. It's fun because we, everyone does their own little take on our costume, everyone sort of accessorises it a bit and makes up their own. Perfect catastrophe is almost a separate entity and as soon as the face paints on I'm like I'm ready. Some girls like to wear onesies like the leotard thing and some of them cut their t-shirts. Everyone says fishnets and that's quite a lot of girls skating fishnets. I've never worn a pair of fishnets in my whole life because I don't want the fishnet burn that you get. <laughs> Mainly skirt because I haven't actually shown them half the things I can make. The skirts were just, they, they kind of taken a life of their own because of the, the, the cause they've got a few different designs and stuff. I love crochet, I love working with wool at the moment, wool and fabric. I love working with that stuff. If I make a dress or a skirt, I can knit a hat and a scarf and gloves to go with it. You know, because I can draw, I can make stencils and therefore I can screen print. I make the skirts, but just they, they kind of taken a life of their own because of the because the, the, they've got a few different designs and stuff. Sometimes for the guest skaters, we haven't got time to print up their numbers sometimes, and so you end up having to sew. Well, they'll print it your number on a different piece of material and then put it on your shirt. It's all DIY. Some women, they're like married, got lots of children, and so it's their way of just escaping from normal everyday life. My mum, before she did it, um, she said her life was boring, then after, when she joined the you know, she said she couldn't do anything without me. Before, all I did was kids, house, kids, house. Yeah, they do become a second family, and I feel very, very comfortable in um, you know, the company of the league. You make a lot of friendships in Dubai, you spend so much time with these women, I mean you have to bond with some of them. They can get a bit frustrated when they're trying to get on the computer to work and I'm on the roller derby forum. Everybody goes to Ruby's birthdays, we have barbecues and of course there's the after parties. My boyfriend and I had some troubles because of it, because I wasn't seeing him at all. If you didn't support your partner doing it then there's going to be a big problems because it takes a lot of the time off. And you think how many people you get to meet, you know, you get to go and skate in Germany, meet a load of girls that will put you up. I don't have holidays now, I have skating holidays, so it's great that I get to travel all the around the world, but they're all skating related. So I've been to like America twice, and that's been for roller derby, I've been all around Europe when we've played other teams around Europe, and you just kind of treat that like your holiday. So it's quite cool though, because now I've got a friend in every city in the world, so I could go anywhere in the world and find a Derby girl to hang out with. So. We play another league, we always try and make sure when they arrive that everybody's friendly, that they've got water, that they've got snacks in their room, that we try and see if they need a help getting from the airport, if they need us to help them find somewhere to stay, so that when they arrive it's already quite a friendly atmosphere. 
you want it to be competitive, there's jokes, but when someone's coming at you to hit you to your arse on the floor, it's kind of nice to know they don't have a problem with you. Once you go out there, you will need to let the skate out and people call your name and stuff, and that's quite nerve-wracking because you know everybody's looking at you. The first time ever when I knew there was people watching me, I was terrified. And I remember going around at Royal Britannia saying to Kit, I'm scared. I'm going to be slightly panicky tomorrow, I expect, because I always get extremely nervous before about, so um, I'll probably just go, no. I was so terrified at my first game, I was like, my knees were shaking. We've got sponsorship committees, marketing, PR, um, recruitment committee, health and safety. The founders used to run it and then they decided to get in, you know, get the new blood, get the new ideas in. So they opened up directorship positions and I was the first chairman director. Tanya's the head of merch and Smackaroo's on the art committee and Lady Lazarus is like a, one of the grievance girls who deals with complaints or moans. So obviously I was a skater. So I taught people how to skate. If we keep DIY, then we've got nobody to really deal with except ourselves. I sort of correspond with um, other people, with other external liaisons from the other leagues. So, for example, if it's about coming up, we have to sort out about contracts so people, everybody knows what was expected of them. Making sure you got first aiders on the on the teams, all the practices. Liaising with coaches, make sure the coaching sessions go well. We will do some like promotional stuff, some photo shoots, for, like fashion stuff, and for the film that came out, the Drew Barrymore film, we all went and skated for that. There's always a link to our Facebook page, to um, our website, and to MySpace. We make the flyers, we make the programs, we um, organise photographers. Uh, today we've got ITV that's coming. I mean, speak to other leagues and see how they're run, and speak to other coaches get ideas um, about drills and things like that so you can pass it on. It makes sense because obviously everybody is from different backgrounds. I mean you've got some girls out there who do marketing for a living. So why wouldn't you put that to use? I mean we have now have probably about 50 to 60 girls. It's not just skating. <laughs> Thank you.
being injured gave me the opportunity to reflect on what else I could do with the time and, and left for a while. I wasn't sure sometimes if I was going to go back or not, but I always missed it. Um, and then recently I decided to, to get back on the team. It's great to get back with everyone. In December they're going to be doing a Derby World Cup in Toronto and that's going to bring a lot of teams together to play as obviously one united front. I think that's going to really bring up, in especially show America how far it's come here, we'll realise how it's come in other countries and I think it's become just an increasingly growing sport. In England it's like the bit with the most leagues in Europe uh, and then in Germany and France there's quite a lot of leagues um, and like Central Europe but in Sweden and Scandinavia there's, there's two or three in Denmark, I'm, I'm sure there's more now since last week and in Sweden there's um, yeah there's a team in Malmo, Stockholm, Ilmia, North, Gothenburg. Yeah all the Helsinki girls are over, the Calio rolling rainbows are wicked. In America you know um, even the smaller leagues are selling out to like thousands of people. Oh it's I think it's growing from men, it's like tremendous. It's not massive now. I mean I'm sure that in, in the last year there must have been an extra sort of 25 to possibly 30 teams that have popped up. And they're just popping up everywhere. I think there's, since I've joined, I think there's been a new one in Liverpool. Um, I think the Brighton one's only been around since I started. Um, Newcastle. There's now a second league in Leeds as well, which started about uh, a year ago. So currently we have about 70 members of our league, so it's grown loads within the last couple of years. Three years ago it was, it was getting well known then, but now it's up massive. On the 14th of February 2011, the British Roller Sports Federation acknowledged roller derby as an official roller discipline in the UK. Many observers see this as a significant step towards gaining widespread recognition for the sport. But the roller derby maintained its current pattern of stellar growth. I mean, with our last newbie intake, we had 30 girls who registered, 30 girls who wanted to train with us and, and start with the league. And that repeats itself throughout the year. So there's a constant stream of interest um, locally for, for us. And I think that just shows that the demand for roller derby is really high and I think it's going to continue. If they can get more teams going, and, and I think it, it could really take off. It's a women's sport. And there's not enough women team sports around. I mean, what is there not to like? Yeah. Yeah, name what not to like, you know what I mean? Because as soon as you come, like, you just get hooked in it. Mm. Every time I come, it sounds like quicker and quicker. Little fans, like little girls that come and they paint pictures of, like, <laughs> did you see that? Yeah. She paints pictures of me with like yeah, a skull really. face and doing karate kicks with roller skates on. It's so cool. With a lot of footballers, you sort of get to stand back and see them and nobody ever gets to sort of up and touch them but they'll come over and talk to you so, uh, so it's a bit more close it's a bit more friendly a lot better it's absolutely moving all over the world it's the fastest growing women's sport in the world and um, huge and definitely the fastest growing sport in the uk i like it to be as big as it is in the united states if there was a place for me doing it professionally i would, i think i would do it if they keep roller derby real then it's got a good chance of sticking around and possibly in the Olympics, which we've been on. There's nothing better in the world. It's, and I think as soon as you feel that and as soon as you get involved with roller derby, there's no turning back. Whether you're a fan, whether you're a player, whether you're just a cheer squad, it's, once you get it hooked, it's the life, definitely. <laughs>